So coming to the most important topic is abortion. So abortion is nothing but a pregnancy, an end of pregnancy at less than 20 weeks or say the concept is, is weighing less than 500 grams. So now before this, we need to know a little about the types of abortion. So types of abortion, I'll write it over here. One is a threatened abortion. Threatened abortion and inevitable abortion. Inevitable abortion. Then I'll write over here. Then we have a complete abortion. So what is opposite? We have an incomplete abortion. Then we have recurrent. Then we have missed abortions. And finally, we have a septic abortion. Now, in threatened abortion, why I have written all together means these are now entirely opposite to each other. Threatened abortion means the abortion process started, but we can revert it back and the normal pregnancy can continue. But inevitable abortion means what? Abortion process start, but normal pregnancy is not possible. It will end in abortion. See, we cannot revert inevitable abortions, but we can revert threatened abortions. Now, coming to complete and incomplete. Complete uh, abortion, we call it when the abortus has been expelled out and all the parts are intact. All the parts are intact. Okay. But if the parts are not intact, suppose a one particular part, one or two parts are still remaining inside the uterine cavity. That is called incomplete abortion. Next one is recurrent abortion. Recurrent abortion means three or more than three or more than three. Okay. Three or more than three abortions that is occurring. Or pregnancy losses. That is called recurrent abortion. Missed abortion means a, late, a fetal death has already occurred. Fetal death has already occurred. But it has not been detected. It has not been detected. That is a missed abortion. Next one is a septic abortion. In case of septic abortion, that means what happens is any kind of pregnancy loss, any kinds of pregnancy loss along with sepsis, along with sepsis of the female genital tract, that is called septic abortion. Okay. So next one, we need to know the difference between a blighted ovum and a missed abortion. Missed abortion, I have already said that fetal death has occurred, right? So what happens? First, we'll see the missed abortion. Gestational sac is there. Yolk sac is there. Fetal tissue is there. But there is no cardiac activity. And the crown ground length is more than 7 millimeter. Okay. So that means there is a missed abortion. Okay. Now, next one is a blighted ovum. Blighted ovum is a condition where a gestational sac is present. But there is no yolk sac, no cardiac movement and no fetal tissue. Okay. Now, with a diameter of 25 millimeter. If a tall lady comes to you <clears throat> with less than 25 mm, less than 25 mm with all these features, that is, gestational sac is there, but no yolk sac, no cardiac movement, and no fetal tissue. Okay? So what we have to do, we have to repeat the ultrasound till the lady attains a 25 millimeter of gestational sac. Even after 25 mm, Still, if we do not find any difference, then we term it to be a blighted ovum. This is important. So blighted ovum, that means this only gestational sac is present. Okay. So the next one is the causes of first trimester spontaneous abortion. Remember, in this, we have to remember a sequence. So, so cause of first trimester abortion, that is spontaneous abortion, is chromosomal anomaly. In the chromosomal anomaly, the sequence is aneuploidy is the foremost of the most important common chromosome anomaly that can lead to first trimester abortion. The second one is the trisomy. Third one, monosomy X. Then trisomy 16. Remember, this is the sequence to be followed. The lethal trisomy is trisomy 16. And viable trisomy is trisomy 21 that we know that is Down syndrome. So remember this sequence. Now, the next one is the cause of second trimester spontaneous abortion. Talking about that, the first one is cervical incompetence. 
Then we have Mullerian fusion defect, like a biconvoid or a septal, uh, septate uterus. Then we have a uterine finisher, which is otherwise termed to be Asherman syndrome. Asherman syndrome. Then we have a uterine fibroid. Okay, now, <clears throat> next one is the risk factors of spontaneous abortion. The most important factor is advanced age as well as a previous history of abortion. Remember, the one thing which you need to remember is infections can lead to spontaneous abortion. Infections can lead to spontaneous abortion because there are a few other abortions in which infections cannot lead to spontaneous abortions. We'll see that. Frequent abortion. Okay, before going into the other features, we'll see over here. Remember I said infections do not occur, do not lead to recurrent abortion. So the type of abortion in which infection can lead to abortion is spontaneous abortion. The type of abortion in which infections cannot lead to uh, abortions are recurrent abortions. So now, we well, already mentioned three or more than three consecutive pregnancy losses. Okay, now, the most common cause is uterine abnormalities. Recurrent abortion, uterine abnormality is the most common one, around 10 to 50 percent. And that too in the form of cervical incompetence, fibroid epitis, that is submucous fibroid. And the lastly, we have congenital malformations around septate uterus. The second common cause for recurrent abortions are antiphospholipid syndrome, around 5 to 15 percent each. The third in the row is endocrine, that is hypothyroidism. A defect in the endocrine, that is hypothyroidism. And fourth one is a chromosomal anomaly, that is around 4 percent age. And here we have a balanced translocation of chromosome is not present. That is why there is a recurrent abortion. 